Hey guys, Mike here from Applied Engineering and Design, and I wanted to go over the first in a series of videos on SolidWorks. Uh, I know we've done a lot with Rhino and Rhino Cam on our channel, uh, so I wanted to do a little bit about SolidWorks as it's a product that uh, we use and I'm certified in, so I uh, might as well put some tutorials out uh, on that as well. So. First uh, video we're going to do is a video on setting up your template uh, so you can set up all your um, customizations and create a template that way when you open it, um, it's pretty much ready to go. And the next one we'll do is setting up a drawing template that can pull all the custom information in f on the template that we're making um, over into the drawing as well. So uh, let's get started. I basically just opened up SolidWorks here and what we're going to do is going to go into new and I'm just going to select the uh, standard SolidWorks part here. So with that open, uh, what we're going to do first is uh, go ahead and head up to the tools menu and hit options. Um, we're going to come over to document properties. So this is where we're going to uh, make any of our changes. I make this window a little bigger. So you can see kind of what we're doing. So uh, right now we basically have different overall drafting standards, ANSI, ISO, uh, ISO is standard here. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is come down to units and we're gonna set our units to IPS uh, since that's what we're gonna work in for this template. Uh, we'll end up naming this IPS uh, part so what I like to do here is go ahead and modify everything to four decimal places. Uh, angles can stay at two decimal places. And that's all we need to modify here. So we come back and uh, there's so many things you can change here as far as annotations, your balloons, um, size of your fonts, uh, size of your datums, geometric tolerancing, uh, notes, revision clouds, surface finish marks, weld symbols, uh, but typically we work right here in this dimensions um, section here. By changing what we did in units, it automatically came over and changed our primary precision to being uh, four decimal places here, and that's uh, that's something we'd like to do. Um, and this is where you would go through and modify um, anything you would like to change. Most of this stuff is pretty standardized. Um, a lot of times I'll go back through and make small modifications, um, sometimes to the font. If I pop open the font, uh, this has a units mark and a points of 13. Sometimes I'll come in and I'll lower it to 11 or 10, just make it a little bit smaller. Uh, I like it a little smaller. You can fit a little more on the screens and, uh, and various parts, especially when you start getting a ton uh, in there as well. So, uh, so once from dimensions, you can go into tables and your bill of materials in general and all that, you can modify in there. In your dimension experts, um, you can set anything else you would like to set on here as well. There's options for grid and for snap, uh, whether or not you want to display the grid. And back to the units we had, the model display, material properties, uh, has no specified material yet, and we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, that's something you're going to want to specify uh, on each of your parts, so you'll leave that. And here's your uh, image quality. Um, this is a pretty good computer. Um, you can actually increase this if you like, uh, depending on how, how good your computer is. Uh, sheet metal options, weld mint options, plane display, and uh, configurations. So uh, that's pretty much all we need to set in here. Um, and as you're going through, you can make your changes, obviously, uh, for your annotations. And if I come in here, I can, again, switch this down to 10 shrink that uh, for annotations. We already did our dimensions and set it for a hole for all of them. Um, and I can set it for all the tables. That way everything is pretty consistent. So if we go ahead, hit OK, 
Uh, next thing we're going to want to do then is come over to the file menu and go down to properties. So what we can do in here is we can set the author. And this title is what you're going to want to set every time. If the author I want to come up every time, uh, I, we can make this specific to Applied Engineering and Design. And you can come in and set your title uh, when you open it up, since this is going to be a template. So if we come over in here into uh, Custom Properties, this is where uh, you can set all kinds of cool stuff that will auto-populate when you create a drawing. Um, for instance, if you hit down here, you can see a whole list of stuff you can do. So basically, there's plenty of stuff that I want to automatically bring over into a uh, drawing template uh, into the title block, which is what we'll do next. So we definitely want description. And the description will actually be something we're going to enter into here each time. Part number is also going to be entered into there each time. We want to pull material over. This time we want it to actually select the material that we select in here. So we're going to calculate material. And you can see it, it does the uh, expression for it. Revision. We're going to enter that in each time. And you can set other stuff like your stock size, your cost. Uh, I like to add uh, drawn by, and you know that can be put in there. Um, I can put in my name so it's automatically populated every time I open it. And there's also drawn date, which there is a way to set the date automatically, uh, but I'll have to look that up again uh, and maybe add on to this after. But I can type that in here anytime as well. Uh, you can do a last modified, or we can set this to the date of what I want, and uh, it'll auto populate that as well. And you can see all kinds of great options here client, project, status, company name. Put company name in and set that to applied engineering. Let's do it nice and short. And anything and everything you would want in here, you can pick and bring over to it. Department, division, status, vendor, um, everything that, uh, that you would want to do. And I can even add a client. So if this is for a customer or a client, I can just type in who it's for, and that'll be carried over. You can add your checked by. And all that can be auto-populated as well. Uh, and the, the cool part about it is when it's linked back and forth, these will auto-update uh, back and forth between the drawing and the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and the project file. So uh, you can add things, for instance, uh, that you're checked by and your checked date can be added into it as well and that can be done set up in your drawing so that way when your drawing is sent and saved it can auto populate as well uh, so there you have that and your summary information and everything so next thing we want to do is just go ahead and save this off as a template file so we're going to go up and go file save as and I already have it set to this folder here, which is my Applied Engineering and Design uh, Templates folder. And we're going to call this uh, IPS Part. And we're going to change this to Part.dot. Now, when we change it to Part Part DOT or Part Templates, it's automatically taking me back to the uh, system template folder. So what I'm going to try and do is I'll get back to 
that folder, which is in my documents, SolidWorks templates, applied engineering design, and we're gonna save it right here. So if we hit save, we come up and check it by going in new. I've got a tab for applied engineering and design. And we've got IPS part right here. And so that's pretty much it. To be able to set up this tab here is quite easy as well. You're just gonna go up to tools, options, and under system options, hit your file locations. And you're just gonna add a location. And basically the way it's set up is I have a subfolder under there for each of the different uh, tabs and they'll show up across the top of SolidWorks. So uh, there you have it. That's it's that simple to create custom uh, part templates in SolidWorks. And uh, I usually create an IPS template and a uh, MMGS template uh, for metric. And then I have corresponding templates, drawing templates that have the title block set up, maybe with a logo and pulling all the information from the file. So it's very handy. And uh, in our next video, I will show you guys how to create the template for the drawing and uh, set up your title block information to pull directly from the part template. Uh, like I said, nice and quick video to get yourself started with uh, some custom uh, templates in SolidWorks. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us via social media or email us info at appliedengdesign.com or hit us up on Google or just leave a comment right on YouTube. So once again, uh, if you like these videos, subscribe and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.